and welcome to Outlaws to the End. This is the official podcast of OutlawGamers.com, the greatest gaming community on earth. This is the Sometimes Show, where we talk in-depth about the title's topic and tech of the video game industry, and I am Brent Adams, joined, as always, by Mr. Lauren Baumgarten, and welcome back to us, Lauren Welcome back indeed, my friend. It took all of my energy not to interrupt your greeting uh, with the excitement of being uh, back on the air for our listeners or for, I'm not sure if it's for our listeners or for ourselves, if it's a little bit of... It's a little both. A little mental masturbation. You could have dropped a falcon. I wouldn't have minded. Uh, I thought I thought about it, dude. I, I almost dropped a falcon. Um, so yeah, man, it's terrific to be back. Yes, and uh, it, it it has been it has been a hot minute since we've uh, we've been on, but we're back now. We're going to talk about a couple of games. It's a very Ubisoft themed show. <laughs> it is an Ubisoft themed show. There may uh, be more shows coming that are less Ubisoft focused because we have talked about a few different things that we want to talk about. So uh, yes, they're, they're not all there, that's true. In this episode. I do feel like we should sort of. You're right. We should tell people that. Our premise when we ended Outlaw Gamer Radio was that we would continue to do a podcast sort of whenever we sort of felt like it and we felt like there was stuff we wanted to talk about and yeah. that the, that the um, setup of each one of those shows might be different. Uh, and this week uh, is going to be, as you said, Ubisoft-centric. We're going to be talking about two games in particular. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a Division post-mortem and a little bit of a Ghost Recon Wildlands Pre-mortem? pre-mortem? I don't know. What you- I like the idea of pre-mortem. That sounds like, uh, that sounds like something pretty sketchy and illegal there. <laughs> that, um, sounds, that sounds like the kind of thing that you know, money trades hand in back alleys near... I'm kind of, jo- I'm kind of joke- joking about murder is what I've just realized I'm kind of doing. <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of joking about murdering people, which is... Maybe, maybe we should stop that now. The podcast is about something entirely differently now. Uh, entirely different now. So anyway, so I, I I feel like we should let people know that up front because if you're not at all interested in those two games, <laughs> you're probably not going to be interested in much in this of what podcast, we have to say. No matter how much you might be excited that Brent and I put out a show. But, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm not sure how interested I am in, in this podcast <laughs> at this point because I'm over and done with all of this. I mean, uh, Ubisoft, under- has, Ubisoft has just burned me time and time and time again, and yet I keep pre-ordering their games. I can't learn my lesson. Dude, there, uh, believe me, the irony is not lost on me that we are actually doing an Ubisoft, like basically a show about Ubisoft or Ubisoft yeah. games, and that Ubisoft has truly done what they said, which is to move towards uh, uh, essentially like they just said, we're not making any games in our own world games, and all of us grumbled and went, well, that's like that's just fucking dumb because they're, all your games are going to be so samey, and in a way they are very samey. But I, I just played the Far Cry Primal, and I had a ton of fun playing it. Right. Um, and, and they're onto a decent formula, but we'll talk about that. These two games are not uh, particularly samey, although there have been a lot of comparisons made in Reddit between the two. But yeah, um, I, I think I think all of that's kind of in error, though. I agree. But you and I both put a ton of hours into the division, and we've been wanting to talk about it. It just so happens. Yeah, I think I've got that, close to uh, three hundred. I think. Yeah, you do. Uh, it just so, and I got I've got upwards of like one hundred and seventy or something. It, uh. it is close to my most game, most played game of all time. Yeah. Um. But so we've been wanting to talk about this, and then it just so happens that uh, uh, the Wildlands beta had come out a couple weeks ago, and and uh, you and I are both talking about playing that as well. So we thought, well, what the hell? We'll do it. We'll do a show about Tom Clancy. Absolutely. Yep. And I guess if we're going to kick things off talking about the division, I just checked that I've got two hundred and sixty hours in Tom Clancy's The Division, a very unlikely title for me. And there's there's a whole bunch of kind of personal stuff that goes along with all this, but. Last year was really interesting for me as a gamer, you know, because like throughout our careers on on the Axe Factor and on Outlaw Gamer Radio, me on Epic Battle Axe or ba- Battle Cry, pardon me. Um, you know, I've always been a gamer that was there for the story. I was always interested in gaming as a storytelling medium. Never really cared too much about, you know, like first person shooters or playing online and stuff like that. And last year was a complete role reversal for me. I played basically nothing but multiplayer co-op shooters with people online and almost no like you know single player story driven games i mean i played uncharted 4 that certainly fits my mold uh but uh but outside of that really nothing but now the division is kind of an interesting one because it is almost a, a hybrid it's a game that can be played single player which is how you played quite a bit of it yep but it's a game that can also be played to completion in co-op, which is how I played it. And so I think this will be a fun talk because we have such a different perspective 
uh, on playing the game coming from those two different directions. Yeah, this was also. Uh, I mean, this this is an unlikely game for me, Brent. If you remember, I watched you. Mm-hmm. You you. I think you were at two hundred and fifty hours before I ever got the game. Yes, yeah, so I'd been in it for uh, a while. And I had seen it. So I had played some of the beta or demo or whatever the hell it was, and I enjoyed it. But it it didn't. I I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, but I, it didn't like really get me going. Yeah. Um. And it was it was sort of a wait for me. I don't remember sort of what was going on in my gaming life at the time that it came out, but. Um, but you were putting up let's play or not let's plays, but um, like Twitch streams left and right, right or YouTube gaming. I can't remember, but um, it started on Twitch and then eventually moved to YouTube. Yeah, right. And I had watched some of those and I thought this is cool, but I still wasn't drawn in. And then one of our listeners, and I don't want to mention names because I never know if people are comfortable with me doing it on the air. But one of our listeners uh, gave me a code to the game again after you had been playing with them for two hundred plus hours. You had a crew right. of people that you were playing with on on the reg, like. I think, was it Monday, Wednesdays, or something like that? I mean, we've been playing almost seven days a week. I mean, look, we've missed days. Don't get me wrong. We've missed days. But I've been playing video games with Fatui, Neil UK, and Lance in Japan for almost a year right now. Yep. Al- almost almost every single day for a year. And then there's and, and some other axe heads in there, too. Played played quite a bit with uh, Krister and quite a bit with, uh, with Alexander Arts, a little bit with Alexis, Randy Marshbeer. But... Those those three guys, I, I've I've been playing video games with them almost every day for a year. Yeah, so you guys have been doing that, and one of one of the folks gave me a code, and I thought, uh, great, that's great, I'll check it out, and and um, I immediately got sucked in, and I and I like I said, I put 150, 160 hours into it. Yeah, um, I played a lot of the uh, first thirty levels, which we'll talk about single player. You're right. I gave it to my good friend Aaron, who I play a lot of my FPS games with. This is typically not his thing. I've never played like a. Uh, I played Destiny, but I didn't never really got into it. I've never played instance games like this with, yeah. you know, things like raids or things like. Um, M- we're talking about MMO games, basically. Yeah, and I've never played anything like that, and and we're about to talk about why because it did steal my life <laughs> uh, in a way that I that I that I was afraid of with MMOs. But uh, yeah, this is this is out of my comfort zone too, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the, the division is interesting. I, I I like co-op games, uh, and, and always have. And the division is a terrific co-op game. The I think the only downside, and I think the first person to kind of clue me into this was uh, was Ian or uh, uh, Alexander Arts. And I, I remember saying at one point while we were playing, I just I just made some off the cuff comment like you know a cutscene was going on, and we're just talking over it. You know, the four of us are just shooting the shit and. I was just kind of saying, I was like, has anybody paid attention to the story in this game? Is it worth a damn? Or, and, and he said, yeah, actually, you know, I've played a little bit of single player, and the story actually isn't bad. And uh, now that I've played Ghost Recon Wildlands uh, and found out just what bad can mean, uh, I agree that The Division is, uh, is a pretty good uh, game as far as the story goes. It's an interesting narrative. The voice acting is pretty solid. Uh, I think they do a decent job with the writing as far as defining the characters. And certainly... Uh, the premise of the game is is interesting and compelling, but so, sort of the um, the optional storytelling, the things that you, they're like basically like tapes that you pick up. They're called echoes, um, but you can pick those up uh, throughout the game, and they will tell really interesting stories uh, about um, about you know all kinds of people, people who are sort of in your line of work, people who are like an agent for the division, uh, people who are with the various factions that you're fighting against, just regular schmoes. Who are caught up in this, uh, in this, you know, kind of apocalyptic kind of uh, situation with this outbreak in in New York City, uh, and so I, I have to say that what I, although I didn't experience it in the same way that you did, I do have some appreciation for for the game's narrative. So the narrative was outstanding, man. I mean, it really. So the narrative is. Well, essentially, so the way the game works structurally, just to give you guys some background if you haven't played it, is there's th- there's sort of the levels 1 through 30 is the basic game. We're, ta- um, we're talking about character levels. We're, ta- we're talking about the level of your character. Right. Just like so the you RPG know. level, the level of your character. And, and it's not, I, and I mean this in general terms, but just to give you an idea. So there's a story, essentially it's levels 1 through 30. You play through the narrative, and then the world sort of opens up and you get into what's called the end game content. Yes. And that's the sort of world that, that you... You know, so the the I think one through thirty took me, God, I don't know, forty hours maybe, okay, um, ish. I, 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 I can can't remember I to can be honest that, yeah. with you, but um, and, and then another hundred hours of like end game content, which is after level thirty, you get into like, um, uh, um, incursions and 
There's there's all sorts of there's other the content. Un- there's so the we'll, underground. There's survival. And we'll talk about the game in the context of like levels one through thirty and end game because they're starkly different and there's there's pluses and minuses to both of them. But I played uh, like I said a lot of that that beginning uh, the one through thirty on my own or with just me and Aaron. And, and I thought the narrative was awesome, man. I thought the story, uh, the way the story was delivered through the echoes and through recordings and the videos. I don't know if you watched the like the little videos they made, Brent. Did, There's like yeah. eight of them. They're fantastic. Yeah. They're really well done. And I even the reason I slid out of the picture, Brent. We we Brent and I are on Skype video when we do this. And you might have seen me disappear for a moment. Was because I was going to show you this book that I bought. Right. I don't know if you've seen it. I have. But they put out a companion piece to it called New York Collapse. Uh, which is a uh, a book that is supposed to be it is a survival guide uh, in an apocalypse to urban su- the survival guide to urban catastrophe in which one of the characters in the game has made notes all the way through the book uh, but it's a real survival guide and I was so into the story that I got this and read this book and how um, and was was the book uh, a really fun companion piece it was fantastic dude it was absolutely fantastic and um, I just I loved the story, man, and the the graphics. And we're not we're gonna talk about graphics separately, but the graphics in the world were so well realized, combined with the story, that I I really um, felt this sense of like uh, uh, of this not post apocalypse in the way that we're used to it, but uh, but a real viable um, uh, apocalyptic scenario yeah. in a very living, breathing world. And the the dollar flu that Brent alluded to is the smallpox. That was released and you know destroyed, uh, killed numbers of people. And uh, um, I thought I thought the story one through thirty was fantastic, man. It was absolutely fantastic. It was a uh, it, it was a really this game is a really interesting combination of what you talked about before of the story or narrative driven kind of game, yeah. as well as the MMO open world kind of game, which is part of what I think makes it special. I, I agree. I I think that it I think that it combines all of those elements into a in a really a really good ratio and and delivers something. That is uh, is compelling in terms of its gameplay, and uh, and compelling in terms of its storytelling. Uh, that's not to say that either of those are perfect, but I, I do think that uh, that they they've got a, a pretty winning formula here. Um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the graphics, uh, the game is good. I was not able to you know I'm I'm playing it on PC, which I guess we should kind of say for the for the yes, sake of I. reference. Uh, I'm playing it on PC. With a uh, with an NVIDIA GTX 970, right, which is the same thing I have, right, and um, just for reference, I you know the game never looked as good for me as it did in those uh, those those E3 demos that they showed off, but uh, it is a good looking. I don't game. think the game looked as good for anybody as it did in those E3 no, demos. No, it, it didn't. Very, there was a lot of discussion on Reddit about um, the downgrading. Yeah. Of graphics, which you're hearing a lot about Ubisoft as a studio in general right now. Yeah, and, and you're, I think you're hearing about Wildlands. Wildlands. We heard about it with Steep, and yeah, yeah. I, I'm sh- I, I I do not doubt. And if you they're look at it, Brent, it. people they yeah, people put it. up side by sides, and they're they're having a level of graphics in their demos that that aren't matched by. I I would uh, acquiesce to that point about the division that there was a downgrading graphics, yeah. but it, the graphics were still. It's still uh, in good. my opinion, phenomenal, phenomenal, and it is the best representation representation of New York City that I have seen in any game ever. Yeah, and, and you're pretty familiar with NYC, so. Well, and yes, being yes, I am familiar with New York, and it's a pretty. So I was I, I was saying in a video game, but even uh, relative to the real New York and the the living breathing world in this game is is an integral part of the story. The way New York is often a character in. You know, and whatever film it may be in, and Woody Allen films or whatever, yeah. Um, and it's really realized in, in a stunning way. And the graphics, um, albeit a downgrade from what they showed, the Snowdrop engine is still performing. Uh, I would say more than admirably. I, I agree. I, I think I think the game it certainly ran good and looked good uh, for me. Um, I think that uh, I think that there, there's also a lot to be said for. The way that the HUD in the game works, and and I, I like the way that they use the um, I can't I'm trying to remember it's it's like it's like a, it's like a name it's an acronym but like I don't know like Adam or like whatever like their their interface is called um, Isaac uh, it's Isaac yeah Isaac uh, the way that the Isaac system works as far as um, as far as what was shown off initially like, like originally remember they had that kind of like dead space almost like HUDless HUD where you'd activate your Isaac and like the map of like New York City would appear as a holograph. 
or as a holographic yep. image, like around you, around your yep. character in the world. They've dropped that, you know, like now it's just, you know, like you go to a map screen and, and all that kind of stuff. But there are some interesting kind of remnants of that design sensibility, particularly in the echoes, which will try to kind of recreate a, uh, you know, like a 3d model of, of some, you know, like the idea behind an echo is that the division has all of this intelligence pouring in from, uh, you know, from the sources that Edward Snowden warned us about, and they're compiling all, everybody's cell phone calls and like images from cell phones and traffic cameras and ATM cameras, and they're trying to kind of reconstruct a little virtual holograph in a particular area. So, like, you might walk down an alley and pick up an Echo, and you might kind of see this holographic uh, image of, um, you know, of, of like two guys attacking someone and killing them for their coat or something like that, as an example. But I think that the I, I think that the game does have a pretty interesting kind of uh, design sensibility to it. Not maybe as well realized as it uh, as as what they were shooting for in their early demos. You know, I, I think they kind of fell short of that mark. But there is some uh, there is some interesting kind of stuff going on with the game, and and I, I do think it's kind of got its own identity in that regard. It very much does, and, and I think that. Uh, as you said, so certainly in the map part that changed a little bit, and some of what you describe with the maps is reflected in the echoes. But that sensibility uh, certainly comes through in the in the HUD itself, as you said. And I went through; I've gotten into a habit now where I, I actually so so um, the HUD is very customizable, mm -hmm. the interaction is very customizable, and I've gotten into the habit now with games like this. I tend to turn off the map altogether. Right. Uh, so I turned off the mini map. I turned off the. Um, the line, which I actually really liked, I thought that was a very classy way to do it, where the line runs over you in the middle of the street, to f so you can follow it for directions. Yeah, uh, I turned that off, and I only had my personal HUD with health and that sort of thing uh, come up when I was in battle, kind of thing. Right. Um, and so I ran with, I tried to run with essentially uh, um, no HUD at all, um, and, and I and I really no HUD, no HUD at all, no overlay, and I really liked that. And but I I uh, I still like the way they did it. It was not as cool, you know. Again, that that map they showed at, at E3, everyone was like, "Oh, damn, son, that's dope." Yeah. And then now it's gone from the game. But but alas, but uh, the the game is full of of kind of you know cool imagery though. Like you know we're talking we're kind of talking about art direction here. And the art direction of the game is very good. There's 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 cool things in the game. There's poignant and dramatic scenery in the game. Um, you know, coming across, you know, coming across, you know, people's apartments, and you know, kind of like seeing the state of disarray as they were hurriedly, you know, kind of like trying to throw their lives into a bag and and scram. Uh, and, and you know, and and sometimes you find out what happened to those people. Sometimes you find out whether they made it or not. And yep. Um, that was a very po poignant sort of intersection, I think, Brent, I of the story and the the design or whatever. Those those moments where where you had like people talking about their kids or looking for their family, and you could see in the apartment like you know the disarray or whatever. Those those really like affected me, emo you know, emotionally. I agree. I, it's kind of like what, when we talked about the uh, the Last of Us. Um, you know, it, it uh... except good. <laughs> <laughs> just says just says one guy on earth says and Lauren one guy. Yeah, that's, I was just just talking about that um, but uh, similar to what we kind of talked about there where you know there's a lot of a lot of storytelling is going on in the art direction and yep. um, and it really really kind of top level stuff uh, let's go ahead and move on to, to mechanics because uh, let's face it uh, for me I played this game for mechanics I, I played this for gameplay and not so much for story uh, I kind of came to appreciate the story later, but what what really yep. kind of got me in the beginning, and and I guess the four of us, uh, was uh, was the gameplay mechanics. So, uh, as you may or may not be aware, the division is a third person cover based shooter. I was aware of that. Yes, and um, I think it's I think it's a pretty successful one. I think that I mean you know people talked quite a bit about uh, uh, Gears of War and Uncharted, which are obviously you know two uh, two really uh, high profile examples of uh, this kind of gameplay system. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not perfect. I don't, I don't know. I haven't played a lot of Gears of War, so I can't really draw a direct comparison there. But as far as, uh, as far as Uncharted goes, um, I, I don't know that I liked it better than Uncharted, but it, you know, in time I got really? good enough to really, I, I got really good enough with it that, uh, that, that I, I became to like, I, I came to like it, but I think in the beginning, I, I, I don't remember feeling like really enthusiastic about it. 
for like the first 30 hours or so, but I think over time it kind of won me over. That's interesting. I, I um, So when you talk about the shooting, I think you also have to talk about the cover system because I think they're so... Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, you kind of really have to talk about everything in terms of shooting cover system skills and gadgets because they're all sort of tied together. Right. But um, um, I it's interesting because when you were talking about Uncharted, I would say that the, the mechanics of the game, and, and you're right, it did take maybe a little while for it to sort of settle in for me, but I, I feel like they... They just felt better. The snap to cover, the snap to um, cover is very cool, actually. The shoot better than Uncharted. I, I wouldn't like. I don't think of Uncharted as a a game that has really good mechanics. Um, uh, I felt like the mechanics, the shooting, and the covering cover was was tighter in this game than maybe in Uncharted. But um, you know, it's it's interesting. So, uh, do you, Brett? I, I'm curious to know. What, when you were playing this game, or at any point in your 256 hours or your nine months of playing the game, mm. um, did you get into like Reddit? Were you going to Reddit and reading a bunch of stuff? Very, or? very little, very little. Almost, I mean, a handful of times during the whole year. So you're just straight playing the game. You're not like doing extracurricular shit around it, or no, no, not not at all. So I think that's an interesting division between your not no pun intended between yours and my experience. Come that on. was real, truly that was an accident. Um, it, it is an interesting um, dichotomy between yours and my experience. I very quickly, so, and, and remember, I didn't get into the game till it was out for nine months, so there was like tons of people yeah. who at this point had well beyond max their levels and were getting into meta builds and stuff like that and min-maxing, and, and I started to go into Reddit like all, I was reading about this shit all day, every day, because I was so into the game, mm-hmm. um, and which is a whole other aspect of this game, right? And uh, this game, so in this game, for those of you that haven't played it, um, in addition to sort of being a third-person shooter, it's also an uh, it, it's kind of a loot shooter, right? Yeah, I mean, um, it's 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 got MMORPG kind of roots, right? And so, so and you have you have skills and you have gadgets as well. So you could have like um, a mine that you can roll on the ground, that a seeker mine that will go find your enemy, and you could have a turret that you can throw out and can sh- you can decide if it shoots out flames or bullets or smoke or yeah and you can have these different you can have a healing station so you get two gadgets in addition to your two weapons um three and including your sidearm uh, excuse me your three weapons including your sidearm that's correct um and, and so that obviously changes dramatically how you play if you throw a turret out when you come across guys or if you throw a sticky bomb at them or whatever yep. um and so people people um you know um, data mine the game did a lot of tons of testing and would figure out what like the absolute optimal builds were mm-hmm. for PVE and PVP, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and so uh, I was reading about all this shit and min maxing and stuff like that. And it was, so I was like acutely aware of that stuff as I was going through the game. Uh, I knew as I was playing through the game, if the G 36 was the best assault rifle and what the, you know, which was the best LMG and that sort of thing. Um, and, um, that being said, I, I felt like the, the mechanics, the shooting and the cover system were super tight. Um, there was a lot of back and forth on Reddit over skills being overpowered, gadgets being overpowered, um, and how, and, and build. So the other piece of that is your, um, I was going to say costume, not your costume, your, your, your um, gear, your gear. And what they had gear sets. So if you were wearing four pieces from the same set, you would get additional bonuses, that sort of stuff, yeah. right? It's a, it's um, a real. I mean, it's a stat heavy game, you know. In, in in the way that, like, you know, in the way that MMOs are kind of an abyss of of gear, stats, and just you know, kind of changing things out, trying you know, moving things around, trying to find, like, as you said, the optimum build. If you like that kind of thing, the division is really, really gonna you know, it's gonna be a good match for you because uh, the the game really, really has quite a deep sort of set of gameplay mechanics built around that specific you know sort of gameplay style but they did a really good job i think of balancing that whereas if you don't like that Every, stuff, everything with the inventory screen is great yeah uh yeah <laughs> the yes. way you the um, way you interact with all that oh, sucks Jesus balls Christ. um but they but, but there's if you do, if you're not into that shit you don't have to do any of that stuff honestly that's true and, and you you, you will have a hundred hours of fun Playing this game in the PVE arena, you don't have to go into PVP at all if you don't want to. Yep. And if you don't, that shit matters way less. Um, and you can have, you will have, you know, fifty to hundred hours of like some of the best fun you'll ever have, in my opinion. But 
Um, so there was a lot of discussion over how, how well balanced was all the gear and how well balanced were the gadgets and the skills and all that. Yeah. But, but for me, anecdotally, uh, I thought all of that stuff worked in tandem very well together. I tended to gravitate towards specific types of weapons and specific types of gadgets, and I just couldn't have had more fun with them. And then when Aaron joined me later on, he was like, all right, dude, so you're playing that way? Well, then I'll do this. I'll, yeah. I'll, be a, I'll, I'll build out the health stations and stuff. And he just grew to love that, and that was like his role on our, our little two-man team. And, uh, and we started like really playing in complimentary. We'd go up to... You know, we go up to a bunch of enemies and be like, all right, so first you throw out the turret, then I'm going to throw out the health, yep. then uh, I'm going to do pulse, mm-hmm. and, then, and it really, like, it just sort of naturally That's where the tactical um, part of the tactical shooter really kind of comes to life in this game, and, and, yep. and that, was the, that was the draw for me. I mean, you know, like, I famously, uh, you know, don't have much affection for... Um, I, I, I don't you know, just sort of like the mainstream, you know, like FPS is like COD and, you know, stuff like that. Um, but this game had just enough of a kind of tactics and strategy sensibility to kind of get me. That's what kind of got me initially. That was the initial thing that really got me in. And we had so much fun with exactly what you're talking about, sort of figuring out what combinations of things we could each put together, where we would overlap and where we would not overlap with our skills and things like that. You know, I, I usually ran a support station. So, you know, I drop a heal station whenever we were in battle. But then I was also doing crowd control. So I'd have a sticky bomb that I would use to stun groups of enemies as they came in. I and never used the stun sticky bomb, not one time. It's mad useful. I mean, it's mad useful. And you know, so that's the thing. Like, you know, I was kind of like doing a combination of support roles, crowd control, and then also healing. And then, um, you know, uh, like, like Neil or Lance, like, you know, one of them would have like a turret as an example, uh, you know, like lay down fire. Um, you know, somebody would be using a, a, a seeker mine and, you know, like the way that we would do like our weaponry and stuff like that, you know, like Fett, uh, always tended to favor, uh, you know, like a sniper rifle and he always, you know, was like working to, to build like a really, really badass sniper rifle continuously upgrading and that kind of thing. And so like, you know, when we needed, you know, some kind of like badass sniper, uh, you know, for a, you know, a situation like, you know, Fett was always there to do that. And, you know, I'd usually have like a, you know, a sniper rifle as well but you know for a while like i switched out and i went to like an you know like a uh, an smg and i did like really kind of close in flanking stuff um and then you know uh you know like like or maybe like a like neo would have like an lmg and he would just concentrate on like laying down suppressing fire trying to put them and keep them in cover so that you know two of us could go and flank them while uh, the other two just kind of held them down Uh, that ability i love that you know the gameplay uh, mechanics of, of uh, the division allow for creativity within uh, within your play style, you know, and the ability to kind of inject your imagination uh, into it with this, you know, these tactics and strategy, and that, that was super, super fun. It's so interesting to hear how you guys did it differently or with different gadgets. You know, I would like, I would occasionally foray into something different. I'd be like, you know what, I'm going to try a ballistic shield and an SMG, yeah. and I'm going to change my whole gear set loadout, and I'd do that for like Same 20 minutes. I'd be like, this sucks. This is bullshit. I'd switch back to my, I would usually, I, most of the game. So it's interesting because there's a very big dichotomy between one through 30 and everything else, right? That's, Once that's, you got that's to the very end true. Game. It, it, the game is a very different animal when you start playing it up to about level 30, once you've gotten through the main narrative structure. And then once you get on the other side of that and start going into the, into the end game content. And, well, and that's the thing, like every, every major release they've done for the game post launch, like, I'm talking about the in-game content releases like the Underground. That feels completely the DLC, different. Yeah, right? Yeah, the DLC stuff. That feels the Underground feels completely different than anything else in the game. Survival feels completely different from anything else in the game. The Dark Zone feels reasonably different than the other things. Right, that you're which doing is in the game. which is was in the game from the beginning. And mind yeah. you, that you you and I you put in I have no idea, but somewhere thirty twenty to fifty hours in the zero to thirty. You know, it's maybe 20 percent of your game time was in the like the main game as it was designed to be played. Almost all which of which is enough post-game. to be a whole game. Yeah, right. And I'm the same way. Like a third of my time was in the main game, um, but and then and then you start to you know really at the end after the in the end game you start to play around with builds and recalibrations and all that oh, kind yeah. of stuff that that aren't as meaningful uh, earlier in the game. But they did. You know, I, I didn't realize it until we were talking about it. But they really did do an incredible, a laudable job, Brent of of um, balancing this ability to make this a deeply statistical game, if you want it to be that, yep. um, but but also making it 
an RPG light, a, a, a tactical third person shooter light. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's what you, if that's how you want to play it, you don't have to uh, make it really, really serious in the MMO vein or the RPG vein or whatever. But you can if you want to. And now that I think about it, as we're talking about it, they really did strike an amazing balance to allow the game to flex to both of those play styles. If you don't include the PvP arena, which we're going to talk about. Yeah, that's um, that, that, that's its own, that's its own quagmire, right? Um, and quagmire it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I think that I think that the the main thing. There's a lot of different ways to play the division. You can kind of play it as a story driven, uh, you know, kind of kind of uh, RPG uh, shooter, if you like. Uh, you can play it as more of an MMO style game that's about you know just kind of uh, you know loot and shoot, uh, you know taking down taking down bosses, doing raids, uh, which are incursions uh, in this game. Um, you can play it like that. You can play it as you know like a really like you know deeply you know stat based gameplay kind of thing where I mean you know your armor has stats, your weapons have stats, your stats have stats, and you can. <laughs> You can get bonuses and things that you you know like there's different like you know armor sets there's like you know like the nomad gear set and you know you can have up to six pieces of that and you get you know you you start getting bonuses when you are wearing four pieces of nomad gear and you get additional bonuses for like you know wearing five and then six pieces you get uh you know each of your weapons has some kind of bonus and those will sometimes those bonuses are stack or yeah, they stack or, or they're well, influ- they have bonuses. They have bonuses and talents. That's exactly right. And and sometimes those will be influenced by, you know, what gear you're wearing and, you know, like that kind of stuff. I mean, there's so, like, and so that's the thing. Like, if you're the kind of person that really enjoys that, you know, th- that type of, like, you know, deeply statistical, analytical kind of, um, you know, RPG-edness, uh, there's tons of stuff to offer there. And so that's the thing is I think that just about all of the gameplay that the Division offers is fun. And so it's broad enough and fun enough that uh, it, I think that it, it can manage to draw in a lot of people for different reasons. Brent, let me ask you a question, because you, you bought this on release, right? Yes, I did. I played the, uh, I played the close. I can't remember if I played the closed beta and the open beta, but I played one of the betas, and then, uh, and then I did get it on release and basically played it nonstop for, God, I mean, it was close to, it was close to uh, six, seven months, I guess. So, do you remember any of uh, 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 any of the shit being broken <laughs> in, the, in in one in the first few Hold months? On. Did you, are you asking me if I remember anything about the division being broken? Right. So you you haven't mentioned that yet. <laughs> well, which no, because it was, like that that's part two of this podcast because that's going right. to go three hours. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So we're, what we're talking about, just so you guys know, <laughs> is the state of the game currently. <laughs> Uh, if you were to go buy this game now, uh, you would get the game that Brent and I are describing. Yes, it is not necessarily what you would have gotten at launch, but it took a while to get there. No, I mean it was. It's it's kind of like um, like the promise the game held, and and it has reached that by and large. Like I think I think by and large the game has kind of uh, been able to realize its potential, but th- all of the things that Lauren and I are talking about that are awesome. You have to remember that through. The first maybe four months of release, this game was fundamentally broken in so many ways. I can't even be—I mean, I can't even begin to describe to you. But so, so I feel I need to jump in broken. here and interject. So many that you things. have already pre-ordered Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, and, but you know, here. Okay, so here's the thing. All right, so there's this whole there's this whole kind of narrative uh, of what happened with me last year. And and part of my my gaming story from last year is <laughs> it's that I became a whore for Ubisoft apparently, but uh, starting with the division, playing the bejesus out of that, we got so frustrated at one point. We were so fr- th- this is like we're waiting for like the one point four update, right? The one point four update that was like where Ubisoft's like, okay, we're gonna put the brakes on the DLC stuff, and we're just gonna concentrate on fixing. So that what's is wrong that is precisely game. where I joined this world. Brett yes, was like, thank God, two too. three weeks before one point four. Right. So you you didn't have to suffer quite as long as we did. But my point is that we completely stopped playing the division. Like 
at that point, we were like, all right, you know what? We'll come back after 1.4, but fuck this. So we wanted to play something else. We went and got Rainbow Six Siege, <laughs> which is another Ubisoft game that launched in a kind of a broken fashion. That's right. But over the course of nine months or so, they updated it. They continually supported it. They added more content, and they fixed it. And so when we got into Rainbow Six Siege late last year, it was awesome. And like we're still playing it every day. We love fucking Siege. And... The reason that I pre-ordered Ghost Recon Wildlands is because, as far as Ubisoft is concerned, I feel like it's a known quantity. I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get a game that has a lot of great ideas, but needs serious, serious tweaking. But they will do the serious, serious tweaking. So far, they're showing that for sure, and they've so they've I don't know with Siege. They've done it with the Division. And well, I, I think so they, I don't I don't know if they too. did this with Siege or not, Brent. But with the Division, so as Brent said, they put the brakes in the DLC. Um, but they also twice now have done um, what they're with the PTS server, which is player testing server, which is cool, um, a very very cool thing. So they're actually they open up a server. Uh, it's a separate download. It's a full forty gigs or whatever yeah. the whole game it's is. Basically, it's basically like another separate. instance of the game. It's another instance of the game where they will they put out the patch. So for one point four uh, or one point five, I'm sorry, they put out the patch <laughs> uh, on this PTS. Uh, anybody who was on PC, it was PC only because. It, they can't iterate on the console. Sony and Microsoft won't let them. Yeah. But anybody who owned the game on the on uh, the PC could play if they wanted to on this testing server, where they could test the upcoming patch. And they did it in a four week cycle. It's fantastic. And players gave them feedback, yeah. and they tweaked based on the feedback in real time. And then said, "All right, we tweaked the build. Check it out this week and see what you think. Did we nerf this one enough? Yeah. Did we bring this up enough?" And I mean, they it, took feedback. It's fantastic. And, it's, it's like, it's and like they people did do the with same their operating thing with, systems these days. Like on they the did the same thing with. Um, uh, I, I would I would imagine they will do the same thing with Wildlands. I don't know. But I hope they, so. They definitely are showing oh, with these titles that they are committed to working on them, and they certainly got the division and um, and Rainbow Six Siege to to a state that. Uh, both communities are like incredibly pleased. The games are in a great state. Yeah. And uh, I also recently bought Steep, Brent, which is another open world game. And yeah, no, I have not played Compl- that at all. Completely different, but I fucking loved it. It was it was really really well done. Um, let's go ahead and jump up and down on Ubisoft's balls a little bit more before we go back to praising them. Um, the main things the that I would zone? say were really kind of broken oh. <laughs> in the game for us um, is. Uh, is is balance? I mean, you, like the the it's a bullet spongy game. I mean, it, like if there's if there's one thing that people who have never played the division know about the division, it's like isn't that the game where it takes like a thousand bullets to kill a boss? I'm like, yeah, it's that game. Um, and the the balance of that early on, it it, it was like you know kind of ridiculous. Especially I remember like in the underground when the underground first came out and. The Underground is really cool. Uh, for, for those who don't know, the Underground is like, it's a randomly generated map. Like, basically, there is a, there is like, a, a, the game will assemble all of these rooms. And I, can't, I don't know how, like, I couldn't tell you how many there are, but I mean, like, dozens. There's like dozens of rooms that are pre-built, and the game will assemble them into a labyrinth uh, that's different every time. And It takes place entirely in the subway, so it's all underground. Yeah, hence the, hence the, hence the title. title. This is, um, this is all going on in the subway. But, you know, like every time you go in, like you basically create a mission, you hop on the subway train, you go to a location, you get off, and now the game has done this randomly generated labyrinth. And there's different objectives, you know, that you'll try be trying to accomplish other than which just. Which is really impressive, kill bad Brent. Guys. That whole, like, it's that fantastic. Whole procedural generation was, is like, blue. I, I thought this, I thought, so it's one of three major DLC pieces. Right. The Underground. Survival and Last Stand; those were the big parts of the season pass. Mm-hmm. They're all sort of they all are post launch content, and they all sort of redefine how the game is played, yeah. which we'll talk about. But the Underground, I was I thought this is the least interest for me. It's just yeah, procedurally generated, blah blah blah, whatever. It I, I thought it looked boring. It was on, in the subway, um, and and I it was very cool. It was I mean, very very well done. We played dozens and dozens and dozens of hours. Yeah, us in, be, yeah, in, absolutely. In the underground, but the, th- the like the thing about it though is like like early on, like the underground, it was such a grind. It was just you know, especially as you got like on the higher yes. difficulty levels, it was like this is like fucking ridiculous. I mean, like you know, like it was taking like thirty and forty minutes to complete like a single tier cycle. You know, just because yes. you've got to put so many rounds into one person 
to uh, you know to kill them. And you know that's uh, that's the thing. Like that's one of the uh, one of the things that got tweaked. They balanced it a little bit more. So it's like okay, well you know the the bad guys they're a little bit easier to kill, but there's more of them, and you know things like that. I mean they 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 addressed uh, the fundamental problems that we had with the game to their credit. And, yep. and, and I mean, th- there was plenty of bugs and things like that. I, I mean, it, it wasn't all just like gameplay balancing. There were bugs in the game. Th- you know, there was difficulty like joining groups. There was difficulty in, um, you know, like like uh, the, the game would, uh, would you know, delete gear like out of your inventory. Uh, you, you'd have things like disappear and just all kinds of like, you know, bizarre <laughs> oh shit God. like that. It, it, like yeah. instances and stuff. Uh, you know, instances, or excuse me, not instances, but like... Um, incursions like you like incursions would bug out where you wouldn't be able to complete them and you know things like that there were some right, really which are brutally difficult are, like you could be 45 minutes into an incursion yeah and it could bug out on you i mean there were yeah. game breaking bugs in the division for i would say the first uh you know the first 4 or 5 months of of its life and i really i really appreciate the fact that they fixed those but I, you know, it's, it's not all sunshine and roses. I mean, you know, there's, there's uh, a lot of people who rightly point out that the game maybe should have not shipped in the condition that it did because it was a really, really broken game in a lot of ways. And it took them, you know, almost half a year to fix. So, uh, just, you know, keep that in mind while we're praising the game at the same time. A lot of it is just, we're so happy. It's not fucked up like it used to be. Well, I would say, but so I didn't come in with any of that experience, true, obviously. True. Um, and and I would say, um, without question, that uh, at this point, y- you can buy the game co- confidently. I think if if you watch, if this sounds interesting to you, and you watch trailers and blah blah, you could buy the game, which now is I think twenty bucks or something, twenty five bucks. Is it that low? But I, wow. But I would I would say you could buy this game for sixty bucks, in my opinion, and just play one through thirty. And we'll have well gotten your money with worth. I agree. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, let alone any of the like the DLC content, which is so up to this point, they still haven't released the last one. That's still coming up. It's called Last Stand. Last Stand. It's mm-hmm. one point six, but um, it is. Um, I think I think the season pass was worth it. First of all, I bought the season pass. I did too. Uh, grant, granted, I was given the game, but I bought the season pass, and I think it was worth it. Yeah. Um, and I think you could comfortably buy, confidently buy this game, and even if you didn't play any of the end game content, which you will. Mm-hmm. Um, you would more than get your money's worth with this game. It's it's really I, I, I'm really really surprised and impressed with uh, how much I enjoyed this game. It's like uh, you know, Brent. It's like so. One of my f- favorite bad movies of all time is The Day After Tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that movie. Is that the one uh, where is that the one where the cold <laughs> chases Jake Gyllenhaal down the hallway? That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, I that remember movie, that one. That movie and Deep Blue Sea, oh, which is yeah. the. Which is the LL Cool J? I know, yeah. Uh, There's little room shark in Tupolev Shark for anyone but Tupolev. That's uh, um, this game uh, is like um, the best, like kind of summer blockbuster movie. It's just fun. It's well designed. It's not the most brilliant game ever made. It's not the most emotional game ever made. It doesn't have the the best of any. I you know best in class and really any of the tactics. No. Or any of the aspects of gameplay, but it's really good at everything. And when it, when it it's the the sum is more it's more than the sum of its parts. Yeah. It really, it, it really um, just feels good to play um, and replay when you're not playing it in the first five months right. and replay. Yeah, I, I think it's got some of the highest replay, replayability of of any title I've owned. Um, you know, attesting you know, to my 260 hours of playtime thus far. But it really does. Th- th- it, they it, do it, so much that that just lets you have fun in all these all the ways we've described. But I, also, I just want to commend them. I mean, we were talking about the underground. There's the survival mode that's that's out which right is, now. That's my f- survival was the last piece of DLC to come out. Yeah. Brent, it came out in the last patch, maybe a month or six weeks ago. Uh, and that's my after all of the 150 hours I put in the game. That's actually my favorite way to play the game. I it's fantastic. They introduced so so. Let me just explain to everybody. So there's this base game, right? And within the game, it's a giant section of Midtown Manhattan. And then there's what's called, and it's all PVE. And then there's uh, which is player versus everyone. There's no player versus player. You can play co-op, player versus environment. Excuse me. Yeah. You can play co-op with people against AI. And there's this is huge section of New York, beautifully rendered, huge section of New York. Then there's this whole separate section of New York on the upper, on the uh, east side, not the upper east side, but on the east side, um, still south of Central Park. Um, 
where you can uh, where where it's the dark zone, and the dark zone is a whole PvP area where once you go in, well, it's both because it's both it's PVE and PvP. Yeah. Once you go in, all the rules change. There are AI enemies, but everybody else can now kill you yep. as well. Um, and we, we and can talk often, about that a little bit. They often will, and they often do. And that whole thing was borked and fucked. But but the point is, it's a whole different, separate part of the game. And then they release the underground, which is a completely different way to play the game. Yep. Uh, with these procedurally generated labyrinthine, labyrinthine missions. And then, and then they completely they, introduced yet another new way to play the game. Survival, which is totally different, you, which gives you a choice to play it as PvE or PvP, yep. and introduces cold and hunger mechanics and a virus mechanic that starts counting down the moment you enter the world, and the entire thing takes place in New York City on the same map but in, in a blizzard that's so strong that it fun- fundamentally changes the landscape. Yeah, because your, your visibility is, is near zero at times. <clears throat> your visibility is near zero. Your, you start off, it's, the premise is that the helicopter crashes. You have you're, 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 going in, you're going in somewhere to accomplish something. The chopper crashes on the way in. So, you, like, no gear. You've got no support. And you've got to you got to survive, and, and you've get, got a virus, and, 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 and you've, got, you've a virus. got a virus. So you've got, like, and so you go out in the cold. All these things working against you. So, uh, so all the weapons and gear and all the stats and stuff you did in the regular game, those don't matter out here. Everyone window. starts the same. Go Everyone on. starts the same. You go out into the cold, and you're immediately freezing because you don't have warm enough clothes, and you all you have is a pistol. There's other players, and there's AI, and you have a hunger mechanic and a virus, and you only have two hours to live, and you've got to find clothes. To keep from freezing to death, you've, you've got, got to find meds, to find keep weapons from from you know dying of the virus. You got to find you weapons. Keep us, yep, uh, and then you have to make your way to the dark zone. You have to build yourself a filter mask. So you make your way to the dark zone. The dark zone has a higher contamination level than the rest of the city. When you make your way to the dark zone, then you get these antivirals. And you're supposed to get the antivirals and then call in a chopper. Which you have to build the flare gun. So you got to collect components to build the flare gun to call the chopper. Right. And so then it once you call the chopper, then the hunters come <laughs> in. There's a whole new uh, enemy type. There's a whole new enemy type. They're very badass. They're very fast. They're very hard to kill. You've got to... So that's the thing. Like, you have to... And, Time is working against you constantly. So the longest you can take to do this is two hours. If you were to get every, if you knew exactly where all the meds were on the whole map, and were just feed, force feeding your mouth meds nonstop, you would live at the most two hours, and then you would die. So there's a countdown clock. Yeah. But and realistically, you, you probably have closer to forty five minutes to an hour. Yeah, I've stretched it out to an hour and a half actually comfortably. Yeah. Um, but. And in addition to that, so remember, at the beginning of entering survival mode, you get to choose are my PVE, which means none of the other live. There's 24 live players per server yep. plus AI. And so if you choose PVE, you guys can't kill each other, but you're all racing for the same supplies. So if somebody yep. gets there first, and they're all instanced, so if somebody gets there first, those supplies are gone. They're not there for you. To say nothing of the uh, fact that they can still fuck you at the very end, because in addition... To you know, defeating <laughs> the hunters, right. you have to get yourself extracted from the dark zone. You got to fire off the flare, wait for the chopper, climb in the chopper. And we were playing one time where Fatui got left behind on account of the fact that these other players ran up and took his seat it on took the, helicopter. the chopper seats, and yes. so he was left behind while we were whisked to safety. Yes. Now, if you choose PvP, you go into this, and there's 24 players, and they can all kill you, plus the AI, plus they're going yeah. for the same supplies as you, and it's it is it. it it completely turns the game on its head. Looting mechanics, survival mechanics, yeah. and it's wonderful. It's really, really good. It is. And, it's, and this was released a year after the game was released. And that's the thing. I mean, like it plays so so differently than the base game. It's just it, it's a real testament to kind of what a what an amazing sandbox the developers created for themselves with this game, and and just finding all of these new and unique ways to uh, to, to make that game fun. All over again. I can't, I can't wait for the last stand for that very reason because every update they've done to the game has just, it's not just been, oh, here's, here's more of the same, which is fine. I mean, you know, there's plenty of games that are so good that right, here's you, more story. Here's like, instead of being in or more, more in, multiplayer you know, part maps of, or whatever. Right. Instead of being in Manhattan, like we're going to do a little like t- five hour, seven hour campaign that takes place on, you know, on Staten Island, Island or, or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, but no, they they introduce like fundamental new ways yeah. to play the game, which so a lot of some people complained about. A lot of people just want more story content. And to be honest, I really want more story content because the story is great. But at the same time, they're also giving you like these completely different ways. Like you said, Brent, the underground. You pro- I probably put thirty 
35 hours just in the underground. Yeah. It's it's uh, fantastic. I mean, it's really, yeah, really it, good on that level. It really is. Now, Brent, I don't know. Uh, I think we should wrap it up. I don't want to go yeah. on for too, too long. Uh, we do want to talk about Wildlands a little bit, but um, the Dark Zone and the whole PvP aspect. I mean, we could do you could do an entire <laughs> show on just that. Um, I played played very very little of it because i hated it i thought it was poorly designed Mm -hmm. um there there's an aspect in in pvp where um when you get killed you don't just so the idea in pvp is you go in the dark zone and especially in the first few months of the game all the best equipment and gear was in the dark zone you go in there to get the best stuff but it's the most risk most reward and there's much higher level enemies but there's also real other players that can kill you um, and what you do is you collect whatever you're going to collect, and there's a, you can carry up to like seven items or whatever it is, um, depending on you know what skills you've upgraded. And then you have to call in a helicopter, as Brent described, using a flare gun, items. and extract your items. And you don't get any of those items in the real world of the game until you extract them. And so, but when you call in a, a helicopter, you're literally shooting a flare in the air, announcing to the entire map a helicopter is being called in for extraction. And then you got to wait there for two minutes and defend while the helicopter comes in. And so, but, but here's the deal. So you could spend 45 minutes working your way through the dark zone and really fighting these harder enemies and finding the good loot. And if you get killed, not only do you lose the seven items you picked up that you were really hoping to take out, these really cool items you found, but you also lose XP and money. Yep. Uh, dark zone XP and money. So you're not just like, oh shit, I lost the items I found. You actually are reverted further back than when you walked through the door in the dark zone to begin with. Yeah. And it is ridiculously frustrating. And that and that's before we haven't even factored in the amount of cheating that was going on in the dark zone. Cheating, camping. Uh I, I I'm talk I'm talking like flat out cheating. I mean I mean like I there's two occasions and I can't remember which videos they are, but you know they're they're on my like let's playlist on YouTube of um of the division, but there were two instances where we were in the dark zone where you know, we were getting attacked by somebody, and the second we started shooting them, they would just wink out of existence. And then five, six seconds later, they'd reappear somewhere else, and you know, start attacking us again. I mean, because they were using some sort of uh, some sort of cheat software that uh, that allowed them to to run that exploit. And you know, we like I said, we saw that a couple of times, and it does it completely turns you off. You're just like, well, what's I mean, what's the point? Like, it's one thing if we get beat fair and square by players who are just better than us. Uh, you know, faster reflexes, better gear. That's one thing. But when you pile in, and what you, what you've just described, even at its best, it w- it was not a worthwhile proposition. It's like the 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 reward was very rarely worth the risk that you took going into the dark zone. And that's before you stack on, you know, people cheating and and beating you that way. Actual cheating, right? So there's the other aspect of that, which is the the people that are are farming and doing all that stuff and min maxing and stuff like that. Yeah. So the other piece of that is. <laughs> You know, when you play Battlefield, it's generally it's generally about skill, and you can choose different loadouts, and you can use an RPG, or you can use a sniper rifle, whatever, but they spend, you know, just so much time balancing that shit. When you get into the PvP in the Dark Zone, um, the, the uh, what your gear and how your gear is balanced and what skills you're using uh, becomes the metas. So they had, like, there were a couple metas, the shotgun meta and the tank titian and that stuff. Yeah. That were certain builds that when when you had certain very specific builds with certain chest pieces and certain pants, you were basically certain guns unbeatable, and and you min maxed all of them, which means you went to the recalibration station and rolled so the talents and that sort of stuff on those pieces to maximize the highest, most impactful stats like armor and minimize the least impactful stats like maybe health. When you've completely like worked, and it takes hours and hours to farm and min-max these and get them there, but once you do that, regardless of how good Brent is, he is like skill-wise as playing a shooter and, and hiding and whatever, he will never beat you yeah. because your gear has made you somewhat impervious. Now, that's, you're not cheating. It's legal, yeah. but the game was broken in terms of balance. And again, you're talking about not even including cheating at that point. Right. So when you stack cheating on top of that, and then on top of that, so you get into the to the dark zone by walking through checkpoints. So envision like you're walking through a door into a separate zone of a city that's walled off. It's, it's like, just um, think of it like a fucking airlock. It's 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 right. just so it's, you walk it's closed th- off small room. You got to walk through it before you get to the dark zone. Through the airlock, and then you come out the other door, and you're in the dark zone. So on top of that, people would very often camp those doors. So 
when you you would just come out and they would just kill you. There'd just be four guys sitting right there the second you walked out the door, and they would destroy you just because they're fucking assholes. Yeah, I was gonna say it makes but, no sense because you don't have any gear at that point. So, but they don't even care. But but the but they're just fucking assholes and think it's funny and they have these builds and they're ten years old emotionally or whatever. And if that shit happens to you in like Battlefield, you're like, this sucks, man. This is bullshit. I'm gonna go play on another server or whatever. But when that shit happened to you in the division. You you lost XP and money, so you went backwards in your progression. Yeah, it sucked, uh, and and the game it, is all is about so, progression. So they're taking that away from you is a big deal. So all of those things combined uh, make the PvP fundamentally broken in the game. But they essentially have like stood fast with their idea of what it's supposed to be and refused to to uh, make changes to it, which is fine. They have every right to do that. I just I played 156 hours of the game. And I probably spent two of it in the dark zone. Yeah, that, I don't know what the percentage would be for us, but it would be low. And we, we did not we did not enjoy the dark zone that much. We went in there because that was basically, the, for a long time, that was the only way to get decent gear. And that was, I think, one of the biggest complaints we had about the game early on, is that the developers were trying to kind of force our hand. They, they were doing it, they were trying to kind of create this incentive to go into the dark zone and get the best gear. But the dark zone, we found to be so egregious that it felt like a punishment more than anything. And the fact that they... And then you felt left out of the best gear exactly. in the game. Exactly. And the fact is, you know, they, had the, they had this crafting mechanic. You know, you could collect uh, junk. You could, uh, you know, refine it into better and better quality uh, uh, crafting, uh, crafting pieces so that you could build weapons and armor and all that stuff. And so, it, like, to us, it felt like, look, you know, like, let us have the access to it. Just, you know, have it take longer, you know, or, or you know, whatever. I mean, you know, put put whatever challenge on it so that we can get it without having to go in the dark zone and you know risk everything and it took them a long time before they began to i guess to warm up to that idea and began to give you the ability to get better and better gear in the underground or in um or in uh in incursions uh as right. uh, you know as a reward for for defeating incursions which, which they like eventually that. did do though yeah. so you didn't need to so again when i they started the game eventually. they did it in 1.4 and so when i got to the game um, I, you know, I, I didn't feel that as much of a need to go in the dark zone the way that you guys did, because it was the only way to get the loot at that time, yeah. which, which sucks. So that's a, so that's an interesting thing, but they, they, I commend them for continuing to iterate, for taking player feedback, for working and balancing over the subsequent nine months. Um, I don't commend them for putting out the game in the state that it needed that, but, but you know, they, they've stood by happens. it and they have fixed it. So, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean. Where where the, where it stands right now, the division is really good. And, and, and you know, to be fair, to Brent, they they tried some interesting new ideas in the dark zone, which I think is awesome to try it. I think it failed, but they tried it, and I think they probably learned from it. And they also put together this very grandiose, this huge, like amazing world that, as we talked about, um, really in an interesting way allows players that are on complete opposite sides of the spectrum. From wanting like RPG light or tactical light, all the way up to super detailed and deep stat statistic driven games, and allow them to put in these other game modes and and um, use these other paintbrushes for survival and underground and last stand. I mean, they they created this sort of base set of um, uh, a base uh, like arena essentially the the whole section of New York City that they have and set of tools that have allowed them to do an amazing amazing uh, variety of things in one game. I agree and. Um you know, it's not over yet. The Last Stand DLC is still uh, going to be coming out uh, sometime early this year. And then there's year two content. There's year two content. And, you know, one of these days, they'll start talking about a sequel and whatever that might be. And Yeah, they put out a survey uh, to p- folks uh, and asked if they, like, wanted to see the next the sequel or the year two or whatever they do with it. Yeah. Um, if they want to, people want to see it in New York. If they'd like to see it in another city. If they want to see it expanded, oh, they should, you know, they, they should only do another they only, city. They should definitely. Do I want them city. to do New York. They they only did like between something like Twentieth Street and and up to Central Park, which is around Fiftieth or something like that. Right. I want to see them like go into Central Park. I'd love to see some Brooklyn. Like I just I love the 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 detail. I just love to see them expand New York up further north through Central Park out into Brooklyn. And but keep it all one giant game, so you could theoretically yeah go from one um, to the other. Yeah, it's just one big world. Yeah, that, that, that'd be interesting. I, but I have to say, I think it would be really interesting to see kind of how the tactics and just the the skills, the, the, all the different gadgets and things, like you know what kinds of things would change if you if you pulled it and put it in a city that has a very different kind of geography or a very different kind of feel 
Um, I, so I, I don't know, but w- whatever they do, I'll, I'll certainly be interested in it. Absolutely. All right. Do you want to wrap up being interested uh, in it? Cost me a damn thing. But do you want to wrap up the division content and move to uh, our discussion, our pre mortem? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, on uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, before okay. before we do, I I, I do want to yep. pause for just a second. I want to I want to kind of address some uh, address some things. I, I've had a number of private messages come to me uh, over the past several months asking about, uh, hey, uh, we never see you on the site anymore. Are you still alive? And you know that kind of stuff. And you know, for those of you that follow me uh, on my YouTube channel, I've checked out my live streams. You know that I've been alive and I've I've been gaming, but just in a much much smaller kind of footprint than uh than what i was able to do you know back before uh, my daughter was born and all that so you know that's the thing i have i have you know a little bit of time and i've mostly been filling it playing the division or rainbow six siege you know playing co-op games with my friends and um anyway but um as far as my level of activity on the site or my inactivity on the site uh last year was uh last year was kind of a rough ride for me the, the bottom half of last year Things got really, really sketchy uh, with my job situation. As in, like one day I showed up at work and they were like, "Okay, so like on this day, a few months from now, uh, you're not going to have a job anymore." And um, so, you know, many of you have been in that situation. You know the kind of panic that ensues, especially when you got a family. And um, it really, um, it, it it messed with me in a big way. It really, really got me into a state of depression that uh, I feel like I've only recently begun to kind of get on the other side of. And it put me in this place where I, I mean, you know, like I was, you know, like working on my demo reel. I was like, you know, like trying to do freelance work. I was trying to do anything and everything I could, you know, like as a multimedia producer to, uh, you know, to try to create some kind of stability so that if I did lose my job, you know, that there'd be something to move on to. And, but it put me in this frame of mind where I began to feel like, if I was doing anything in my free time that wasn't, you know, job hunting or thinking about job hunting or, you know, portfolio or demo reel, if I was doing anything that wasn't that, that I was wasting my time or, or, you know, even worse, I was like, uh, you know, like I was, um, I was maybe even, you know, doing harm to my family by, you know, not spending every second of every day doing this. And, you know, in time I kind of came to realize that, you know, like you, you got it. You got to have a release valve. You got to have something to. You got to have some kind of outlet. And you know, but that's the thing. Like I, I went through this period of time where I was just like I was so kind of frustrated and depressed about everything, kind of related to to gaming and and podcasting. And it just, I just didn't want to do anything. Like it just kind of put me in a state where I did not want to do anything. And uh, like I said, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm kind of just emerging from it now in, in the last, uh, since the first of the year, to be honest with you. So for those of you who have asked, uh, I appreciate you worrying about me. I'm doing fine now. Uh, the job situation is on much more stable footing at the moment. Uh, Long term, I don't know what we're looking at, but you know, I think, uh, I think for the time being, things are okay. And so that's giving me a good foundation to, uh, Try to uh, try to figure out you know what what my next step's going to be. By the way, if anybody knows of any jobs in the video game industry for somebody, I was going to say, likes, when, when are we going to start getting paid to podcast, Brent? If anybody we can go back to uh, weekly or daily podcast, right? If anybody knows like of a game studio or any kind of video game related thing where they need like people to do video and audio editing and motion graphics and all that fun stuff, and if anybody needs a multimedia professional, a video game industry, please send them my way because I'd love to. Or you could do you could do community management or podcasting. I could, I can do all of that. So see, perfectly qualified to do I'm, that. That's how I got the job doing working for HB. I am perfectly qualified to work for your video game company. Is the point? So give me a call. But um, <laughs> the point is that uh, I I just wanted to let everybody know what was going on. I want to apologize for people who kind of felt as though my absence was some kind of re- a reflection on the community or. Um, or, or, or anything else other than what it was. And, you know, what it was, was just, you know, me kind of, um, being in a, in, in a state of anxiety and panic over, you know, whether or not I was going to be able to continue to put food in my daughter's mouth. Yeah, it was, it was life. Yeah, it was, it was life. And, uh, yeah. I just, but for all of you who, you know, kind of asked in, you know, checked in on me and asked how things were going and all that, I, I appreciate your concern uh, very much, and, and I'm much better now. <laughs> so everything will be fine. Well, I will speak on behalf of those people right now, Brent, who 
can't speak uh, directly to you like I can uh, at this moment and just say that I'm sure that uh, they and I am are, are, I know I am, I'm sure they are glad to hear that things are moving in an, in the right direction for you and your family. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. So Absolutely. let's talk about something else that may be moving in the right direction, and that is Ghost Recon Wildlands, the... Uh, the the new uh, the new game that we just got our first peek at in the closed beta, which was was it last weekend? It was February. It was uh, a little bit more than it was a week and a half okay. ago. It was February third through sixth. Yeah, that's right. It was the weekend I was out of town. Naturally, God damn it. Naturally, um, I was telling you before, Brent, that I have figured out. Uh, I, had to, I have a Chromebook, which is what I travel with. I don't have a Windows PC or anything like that, and I travel fairly frequently down to New York or whatever, and. Um, I'm never able to play games and it frustrates me. Well, I finally figured out a solution that was only, that was recently released that allows me to using NVIDIA game shield coupled with a, an extension for Google Chrome that will allow me to remotely play my games on a Chromebook, uh, from my PC at home. And I could play at 720p at 30 FPS. So I've been playing. That's fantastic. Uh, I mean, that's fantastic. It really, it really is incredible. I, I, down in New York, I, I, it plays like a champ. And so when I found out that, um, that uh, the Wildlands beta was happening the weekend I was going to be out of town, I thought, God, that really sucks. I was so looking forward to it. But at least I can play it while I'm out of town. Something to do with the open beta, um, or the closed beta, excuse me, made it not work very well. So I only got my... I played for maybe 30 minutes, but it was choppy. It was hard to see. The screens weren't loading quite right. And so I didn't really get a a good sense of it. So unlike you, I did not have a chance to really dive into the beta. But... I, I have. I'm very excited about this game now, which I was not six months ago. You know, we again. You know, me, me and the guys. We call ourselves the Usucksers, largely because of Ghost Recon Wildlands. Because what happened is, we were playing the Division, and we were complaining all the time, but still playing. And then you know, finally, we got fed up enough that we jumped ship to Rainbow Six Siege. After we, I'd read an article about Siege and you know heard really good things, and so we. Thought, yeah, we'll try it out. Well, we love that. So there's another Ubisoft game we're playing. And as we're kind of in that in that zone of like, all right, Division is getting fixed. I'm starting to be good again. Rainbow Six Siege is kicking ass. We're all kind of like, hey, are you guys been watching anything from like Ghost Recon Wildlands? And we're all like, oh man, that looks like so luck up our alley. And you know, we would just kind of talk about, hey, it'd be awesome. Like you know, like like Neil could be like you know, pilot in the helicopter, and then like you know, like he could like drop off, uh, you know, like Fett with a sniper rifle, and he's like, you know, sniper lookout like way up on this hill, and like Lance and I are like sneaking through the base, you know, like freeing prisoners or whatever. Like we were just imagining, like what we would be able to do with the game. And we began to realize it's like you know, like we're sitting here talking about getting yet another. Ubisoft game, right? Uh, like we haven't learned our lesson yet, but the Ghost Recon Wildlands closed beta, like it was exactly what we thought it was going to be. Like all the things that we hoped we were going to be able to do that we imagined ourselves doing in the game, we were able to do and more. And even though, I mean, there, there's plenty of things fucked up about it. I mean, like you go on like Reddit and there's plenty of people making good points about like, you know, like the enemy AI being like really stupid and you know, like like as soon as like you fire a shot, they instantly know where you are, and they just come running from miles around to kill you, and you know that kind. Of, I mean, there's plenty of things about it that are broken, but the things that we wanted out of it, it gave us in spades. And we've all said multiple times that we can't remember the last time we were this excited for uh, for a new game release. So here's so tell me if this is an accurate assessment, Brent. But what I I feel like that. Ghost Recon Wildlands is is the Reese's peanut butter cup yeah. of of uh, video games. Like, like hey, you got I some like here in my Far Cry, right? So I feel like <laughs> I basically feel like it's Far Cry. So it's Ghost Recon meets Far Cry meets Just Cause. Yeah, I, I I'd say that's accurate. That's kind of like and and those like those are all I those are all great They're things. All and great the little games, bit that I did yeah. play, like I got on and, and it the world looks fucking huge. It and is beautiful. It's huge. And, I got I got on a motorcycle and just started riding and I was like just this is fun right now just riding the motorcycle although the cars and the oh are yeah, a little squishy I was gonna say like keyboard, it's good but that you were driving a motorcycle or riding a motorcycle because the driving sucks yeah the, I, and it is squishy and I totally get that and everybody's complaining about it and hopefully they'll fix yeah. it um, the, but, the flying uh, is marginally better it it um, 
I don't know, man. It's just like those are all games that I have fun with, and I feel like at the very least I could get 20 hours of just mindless fun out of this, yes. and I could see maybe getting 120. I, I think um, I think it's going to be a lot. I mean, the province that we played through in the closed beta was giant, and it's you know one out of 21 provinces, which is insane, insanity. And, you know, um, a lot of the, some of the complaints on on Reddit about uh, enemy AI and about also being too easy to kill and that sort of stuff. The yeah. The area that they opened up was was a difficulty rating of one out of five skulls in terms of difficulty, yep. um, get and worse. so there's rumors there's supposed to, there's an open beta coming. Yep. It's going to be uh, I think we the don't weekend know, before launch. I want to say, nah, we don't know yet. They haven't announced a title. There's tons of speculation. Um, I'm hoping it's not this coming weekend because I will once <laughs> again be out of town and I will fucking lose. Well, the game it, but, launches on what? Uh, Is it March seventh that the game launches? March seventh. Yeah. So there's yeah. there are two more weekends between. Three more weekends from this moment we're recording this between now and the time the game comes out. Right. Um, so uh, it'll. I, my guess is it'll be the twenty fourth through the twenty seventh that sort of weekend, or whatever the following one is right before the game comes out. If if uh, For Honor, which is another UB game, is any indication, it might just be the weekend right before the game comes out. But right. um, uh, there is an open beta. We do know that there will be two provinces in the open beta. The one that was in the closed beta and another. And there's speculation. That the um, the second province is going to be more difficult, so people understand. Like people were just freaking out at how easy the game was, even on the most difficult difficulty. Yep. Uh, and Ubisoft was like, "Hey guys, this is there's 21 provinces, and this is literally the easiest province in the game." And so there's rumor they're going to put out one that's much harder, just to give people a little perspective on the right. the difficulty level. Which is fine. Um, yeah, and 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 definitely there there's certainly legitimate concerns uh, that that are being echoed through multiple people, as you said on Reddit. So it's not like some one-off asshole or whatever no. um but i don't know man it just it just looks like fun and, and to be honest with you one of the things i'm most excited about you and i played zero hours of the division together yes unfortunately um, not including the beta we played zero hours of the division <laughs> together um and if nothing else i am super excited to get this game i'm pretty i'm, I'm waiting till i play the open beta just to get my hands on it because it just doesn't make any why would i not wait yeah um, if I can play the game for free before I actually lay down pre-order money, why wouldn't I? Um, but I'm 99% sure I'm going to get it on day one, and I'm just super excited to like play it with you guys and, and experience it together. Because, it's, it's again, it's drop-in, drop-out co-op. Uh, it is uh, completely open world. Yep. It is um, You can play it as guns blazing or tactical as you want. Yep. Uh, every, literally every vehicle in the game is drivable. You, you, we could get four tractors and drive four or four bulldozers and drive four bulldozers together into a base yep. to try. You could just do stupid shit like that. You can parachute I mean, and all just, that stuff. Just think and, about like all the random havoc fun you can have in a, in a Grand Theft Auto or a Just Cause and now add three of your friends, you know? Right. I mean, it, and then, and, and also, but it's not just like, but also add good mechanics for doing that. If you want to do it tactically. Right, yeah. Like, there's no real great way in Grand Theft Auto or Just Cause to play tactically. That's true, but but th- this this does support that, and absolutely. I, I we played. Uh, we were not able to play with Lance uh, because Japan was not included in the closed beta. Yes, that's right. Uh, J- yes. Japan, China, and North Korea, and one of these does not belong. One of any way, Lance was not able to play with us, which we were really bummed about, and so. You know, we played the three of us, and, you know, like, Alexis joined us at one point, and we played with him. And, um, like, the first day, I mean, it was just, uh, it was just anarchy. I mean, it was just absolute anarchy. It was, you know, like, like, hey, you know, like, I'm going to jump in this car, and, you know, what, you know, can I drive straight up to the top of this mountain in a sedan, and, you know, just like that kind of stuff? And the answer is yes, by the way. The answer is yes. And, like, okay, let's hop on these motorcycles. Like, you know, can we jump a motorcycle in the back of a pickup truck and drive it and just carry it around with us? And, you know. Again, the answer is yes, uh, just so you know. You know, it's like, hey, let, you know, let's hop in a helicopter and, uh, you know, like, how far off the ground can you jump before you die? And, you know, just, uh, we were just having, like, so much, like, you know, fun. And um, then, like, the following day, we, when we played again, we were like, okay, like, like, so let's put, like, our tactical shooter hats on now. And we did, you know, there's a forward operating base in one section of that uh, that uh, that district from the uh, closed beta. And so we did the mission, like, where we go there and you have to, you have to, like, sneak inside and interrogate, like, the base commander or something. And 
So we were being like super tactical and, you know, like we're, we're like setting up diversionary attacks. Like, okay, so you're going to kill the power. You're going to release the rebels, uh, you know, that are being held captive there. I'm going to be like sneaking through the base in the dark. I'm going to get it right behind the guy. As soon as the lights go out and people start freaking out, I'll grab him and do the interrogation while everyone else is, you know, scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. And, and Alexis just goes, wow, you guys are playing a lot more strategically than we did yesterday. <laughs> It's like, yeah, same for, same for us. Yesterday was a little bit different for us. But that's the thing. Like, both days, completely different play styles, equal amounts of fun. Yeah, in very different ways, which is I'm stoked about. And again, you can, you can play it on your own. You can control your teammates. Some people have said the AI teammates are dumb. They are Some dumb. people have said they're not. They are, they are stupid. Uh, are they, they seemed a little bit less stupid than other, most other games. Is that not I, true? I don't know if I have a great point. Like, I, I'm trying to think of, like, an example of, like, a game you know, that I can point to and say, oh, they were much, much better here. But, um, well, there's not many games where you can control them, which is something right. you can do. But yeah, I mean, as, you know, in this, but there's tons of games like like Bad Company and all that stuff where you have guys with you. They obey your commands. They can't like, seem to fucking hit the side of a barn with a machine right. gun. I mean, you know, they'll go where you tell them. They'll res you when you go down. They'll they'll defend they kill you. Kill people. They, uh, they they will kill people. But um, you know, they're they're just uh, they're okay. I, I guess I, I did not come away from it going like, wow, those AI teammates are spectacular. They're okay. <laughs> All right, they're, yeah. they're, they're decent. Yeah, they're decent bullets. Bullet uh, shields. I'm looking forward to it. Brent has already. So there's a there's a um, a service called Ghost Recon Network, which is a little bit like Battle Log for Battlefield, yeah. um, where you can go and like look at your stats. They have a, uh, they have a social what do they hub. call them? They call them task they're not, forces. Task forces, yeah. right? They have task forces. Brent has already created one for uh, Outlaw Gamers. Just go look for Outlaw Gamers. OGS is the tag, and uh, and. Like I, I don't know how I, I've got to go back in there because they actually deleted it like on like on Sunday like of the closed beta you know like it I set it up on Friday or Saturday and on oh, Sunday they, did, they deleted that... it and then it reappeared a few days later so uh, yeah. they, they had some kind of problem with their system like nobody could get into their their profiles but it's back now and I probably have a backlog of people I need to approve uh, so yeah yeah so so if you're gonna play the game you're interested you can go join that um, as always I'm gonna put up the disclaimer. Uh, if you guys want a friend of me on UPlay or whatever, you need to make sure, unless your name is, uh, even if your name is the same on uh, OG, uh, OutlawGamers.com, please send me a private message somewhere, whether it's uh, on Outlaw Gamers or something, just letting me know who you are, because I don't tend to accept friend requests from just random people that I don't know who they are. Um, I don't know if that's true for you, Brent, or not. I, I, don't, on U, I don't on UPlay. I, I've accepted a few friend requests of people that, yeah, I just I like to tell people because you'll send me a friend request, and if I don't know who you are, you won't you won't hear back. And so, yeah. but if if you're from OGS, I'll always accept it. And so, yeah. but yeah, Brent's Brent's got a, a, a task force already created <clears throat> on uh, Ghost Recon Network. I'm, uh, we you know, of course, we have the uh, Discord server. Um, Definitely get on the Discord still, server. If you guys are not on the Discord uh, server, get on the Discord server because it is. Are awesome. we still running the Mumble server, Brent? I can't. The remember. The Mumble server is still active, as far as I know. Yeah, uh, I've not. Yeah. I've not disabled it. I don't know how many people are still using it, but um, if you guys are not on the OGS Discord server, get on it. Discord is fucking awesome. For those of you who do not know, Discord is a. Um, it is. Ju- it is just a communications platform for gamers. Uh, they've got desktop apps from all the major platforms. I, th- I think Linux is out at this point. I can't remember for sure, but definitely Mac and PC. They've got them on Android and iOS. You don't even have to install a fucking app. You could run Discord in a fucking web browser. You can. We've got chat rooms set up. You can uh, chat with other outlaws. You can do personal messages. You can use it like an IM platform. And we've got voice channels. You can do calls like you do on Skype, or you can do uh, voice rooms the way you would like on Mumble or Vent or something like that. So, I mean, it's just like an exceptionally robust and really, really useful uh, just communications platform, but it's designed specifically for gaming. You can upload GIFs and stuff like that and all that fun stuff. But anyway, if you have not done it, go to outlawgamers.com and log in because uh, the only way you can see our little widget that shows you how to join the server is for logged in members of the Outlaw Gamer Society. But definitely do that. Yeah, so it sounds like game nights will be played through Discord. So get yeah. yourself hooked up with that. Also, I did want to mention to people, um, there is a, along with Ghost Recon uh, Network, there's a Ghost Recon HQ app on uh, iOS and Android. Yeah, which is not bad, has, actually. Did you check it out? I, well, so the, I have been checking it out, and I've been actually playing the game. There's yeah. a little mini game in there that I actually quite enjoy. The mini game is fucking uh, cool. And in that game, you, you can amass resources that you can then transfer to your Xbox, PlayStation, or uh, PC version of Ghost Recon Wildlands, yep. which the resources that you get in the game, which you can also actually collect 
in the game. It's like medical supplies and clothes. equipment supplies or clothes, right? Yeah. And you use those to like upgrade stuff in the game. Right. But you can pl- be playing this mobile game now anywhere you want, uh, and actually amass. Uh, a- a- you can actually amass um, resources for the for the main game. Yeah. So uh, you can check that out, and then. By the time this is posted, they will have released. They did. I, I don't know how long it is. I think it's maybe twenty or thirty minute live action promo for the game. It's like a little short movie type thing. Right. Um, that will also be out for people that are interested in the game. But uh, yeah, man, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. I, I as crazy it is as it is to say, um, while Ubisoft has definitely had some big stumbles in terms of uh, certainly bugs and issues and release, the last year. Or so the games they've released, even though they're all in some way formulaic vis-a-vis an open world, yeah. um, they're they're really good at it and they're fun and and uh, they're supporting the games, they're interacting significantly uh, with their community. Um, that's that's the big uh, one for me: the fact that they are engaging and listening to their community, and, and that the community is you know their feedbacks being taken into account to how to shape the game or fix the game. The, that 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 buys a lot of goodwill with me. I agree, man. That's huge. We talk about it all the time. And you know what? Yeah. When uh, I, I will give a company, just like I would give an individual, a chance to you know make 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 themselves better and improve what they do and and earn my loyalty or whatever. And so far, you know, in the last year or so, Ubisoft has really been showing that. And I, whatever, I'm excited for Wildlands. I'm probably going to buy it. I can't wait to play the open beta with you guys, hopefully, uh, and then actually get to play the game with you when it launches. Hopefully soon, man. I've already pre-ordered the gold edition of the game. Um, you know, and you know me, like I don't pre-order, and I usually scold you for pre-ordering. That's but, right. Uh, you know, it's one of those situations where I feel comfortable enough that I I know what's going to happen. Like I, I'm I'm expecting the game to come out, launch, be broken, have bugs, and but I've got enough of a track record with Ubisoft over the course of the last year that I'm very very confident that they will continue to engage and listen to their community, like we were talking about, and that uh, that this game will. We'll get whipped into shape, hopefully even faster than uh, than Rainbow Six Siege and and the Division have. Yeah, man, I'm excited. All right, uh, I guess Brent, we're going to wrap it up here. I got to say to you, man, it's great to be back in the chair with you. You too, man. Uh, it was it was so fun. I, I can't and I can't thank you enough. I mean, like honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for for texting me and and saying, hey, do you want to do something? Because it came along at exactly the right time like it was exactly what i needed to kind of feel like yeah you know what like all this shit that's been happening to me like in the bottom half of last year i'm finally laying that pile of bricks down and and you know th- so this was a really really fun experience for me to get back into it with you thank you absolutely man it's my pleasure it brings it bring, bring a sense of normalcy this is the way, this is the way the universe is right now that's right this is the way it should that's be. exactly right uh, i really loved it hopefully we won't make it this long before we do the next one i don't think we will people no. uh uh, we're happy to do it for you guys. We're glad that you guys are listening. Glad that you joined us. Make sure, as usual, that you sound off on the website about what we talked about today, whether it's Wildlands, Brent's personal life, or uh, <laughs> yeah, <please> sound <laughs> just off. Kidding, or the division, or anything Unless else. You got you know, job I, offers, I, I, so in which case, please sound off. Please do sound off. I uh, I come to the website every day. Uh, although I may not participate every day, it's still where I go for my gaming news. I, I couldn't be more heartened that uh, that the website is as active as it is, and and uh, that we still have the best community out there. Um, and and I'm basically on the Discord server 24 seven. So if you want to chat, if you if you want to talk about stuff, if you want to talk about website shit or fucking division or Ghost Recon or whatever, just hit me up on Discord because I'm basically there all the time. All right, guys, thank you very much. We'll see you on the next show, which hopefully won't be too far away. And remember, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing.